Have you dreamed of owning a convertible but never had the option to buy one or just thought they were too expensive? Well, I might be able to help you with that today. In today's video, I am going to talk to you about some lovely convertibles that you can buy on a budget that aren't as much as you think they are and fairly cheap to insure. And however, some of them could be a little bit more to maintenance. It's definitely worth considering a few of these. Hey, I'm Carson Ben and I make weekly car content. So if you are into any of that, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump straight into it. For my first choice of car, we have the BMW 3 Series Coupe, a car that you probably wouldn't expect to be as cheap as it is. Now, this car is the 2007 2008 models you would be looking at and these are actually really really good cars for the money they're actually a lot cheaper than you would expect now i found one on auto trader for a very decent price and i will go into the pros and cons of the car in a minute typically it comes with a 200 to 270 horsepower engine and here i found one for four under four thousand pounds which for a convertible and a bmw at that is pretty good now there are different models and different types which are just so many i think there's the 330i there's the 33cd the 330, 325, I don't know, they're all convertibles, but basically this is the one you want to be looking at. The 07 model, the 08 model is the perfect model. The engines are pretty good on these two, and they're good for 6,500 RPM and a pretty decent amount of torque and power per litre of 90.8. Now, something to be aware about on these cars is that they are really good looking and they have a fantastic metal revolving roof, which I think is great also have a great choice of engines like i said and as it's bmw it's pretty refined however the sum of the cons that are the small boot space and generally speaking maintenance on these cars is expensive because it's a bmw you know services and any kind of repairs are going to cost you through the roof so just bear that in mind when you are looking at these bmws even though they're great cars i think they're great convertibles these may not appeal to everyone, which you can completely understand. And for that reason, you may want to go with the older version of the BMW, the year before the 2000 to 2005 model. Now, yes, in the right spec like this one here, it does look good, but I think it's definitely something to bear in mind because you don't want to go for a boring spec. You want to kind of get the M Sport kind of look if you are a car fanatic. At the number two spot is a car that I feel is definitely definitely underlooked a little bit in a convertible seat. Now, it is probably the most expensive to maintain, but it is the Porsche Boxster. A Porsche I've actually wanted myself for quite some time as a replacement to my MX-5. I didn't want to include the MX-5 in this because I've included it in so many videos, as you probably know. Now, I do talk about it a lot, but I would always like to own a Porsche, and I think that's something I definitely like to look at. Prices for these aren't too bad. Now, a lot of them are actually under five grand, but if you want a good one, you'll want to pay a bit more than £5,000. Now, use prices anywhere from three to about eight. But this is the thing with Porsches. You really want to be paying a bit more to get a good one. That's not going to break down all the time. Now, the specs on this car are that it is rear rear wheel drive, a classic sports car. And these are quite old, obviously, of course. This is the older Boxster, but it's definitely the most affordable convertible. Now, one thing to be aware of this is that it's a flat six engine and it is a more sort of mid-engine sort of rear so it's, it's one thing that's just a little bit concerning if you are doing into the maintenance side of things the engine is a 2.7 litre 217 horsepower typically in most of these cars and good for six and a half thousand rpm so really good little cars and i think if you find one in this condition like this is very very nice especially with the specs some things to note on the porsche boxster are that it is definitely an issue with some of the kits they don't look as generous on others as they might on this car but it's definitely a car you want to consider if you want to get on the porsche ladder so guys at my number three spot is the mgtf or the mg roaster which i think is a definitely car worth considering now typically most people would go for the mazda mx5 because it's just a better option and i has what i have done but generally this should not be overlooked because it's a british sports car and it uses a lot of similarities to the mx5 now the only difference with this car is it is mid-engine so it is something to be aware of as well with, ma with maintenance but generally uh, they are good reviews on this car all around and the cheapest convertible on this list at only one and a half grand now a lot of them it can even start at one thousand pounds that's how good it is now there are quite a few cons in terms of the build quality being british and mg wasn't known for its fantastic maintenance but this is the problem if you are looking at mx5 they are you'd rather go for mx5 because it's long term 
But that being said, these are good for tracks potentially and a little bit of fun on a weekend. And they typically come with around 130 to 40 horsepower. So not too bad. Now the TF is the special edition model and the MGF Roadster is just the standard edition model. But it's definitely a car I would consider if I was looking in the convertible market because there's so much choice of colours and stripes to go off. And they did build over quite a number of years. I'd be looking to go for the model that is slightly later in the years, the very last run of them. Those are the ones to go for. At my number four spot is a special car. It is the Toyota MR2 Roadster from 2000 to 2006. Now this is the model that is a bit of a like Marmite. People don't necessarily like it. However, I understand that because I prefer the older model with the pop-ups, but this is definitely to be considered. Now this car is very similar to the MX-5 and has a very similar platform, apart from it is mid-engined. Now this is probably, and again, one of the another cheap cars on this list, another cheap convertible, it's £1,700 on this one. Some of them can be less, some of them can be more. And for the most part, you're looking at around that ballpark, which is a pretty good price for a cheap, simple convertible if that's what you're into. Now, some of the pros on these are that they are very reliable, it's a Toyota, so that is really good to have. That said, it's got super sharp steering and some of the other great parts about this car is that it's just a good driver's car, similar to the MX-5. Now you don't see many of them compared to the MX-5. Now, cons, some of them are, have to say, poor load space. Now that isn't a major issue for most people who are going to buy this car, but it does have some issues with wind noise, and because there's barely any space to go put anything in it, you can't really go anywhere in it if you're going to go for a weekend. So that's definitely something to be considered, because as you can see here, the engine is mid-engined. These are typically 1.6 engines and they aren't bad, they're a little peppy, but they are very similar to the 1.6 in the MX-5, but it's mounted sideways. Now I do actually quite like these cars to be fair, and they do have a top speed of 130 miles an hour, so again, similar to the MX-5. Although if you get one of these in yellow, I definitely think it's going to look very unique and you will stand out from the crowd, because let's be honest, not a lot of people have these and you just don't see them as often, and a good modified one will be definitely desirable. I think overall, I definitely would prefer to have my MX-5 over the MR2, but it's definitely a consideration for those who don't want an MX-5. And for my final car, it is the Mercedes SLK Roadster from 2004 to 2011, so quite a long period of production there. But I definitely a car I think is worth considering if you are into the German market, because it still offers a lot of quality and luxury. So, let's go into it. Mercedes SLK from 2004 to 2011. Now this car isn't a car I would particularly pick normally, but I picked it on this occasion because it's still a roadster that gets underlooked a little bit and probably less of a car that gets purchased from time to time. Now I found a lot of them for anywhere from three to four thousand pounds. Now if you want a good one, again, it is a case of paying a little bit more. And also one thing to note with the SLK is that it is a car that might go wrong a bit more given it's a Mercedes. Now they aren't horrendously bad, but Typically, they have got some maintenance issues, and with all German cars, there is always a high price to pay for that. Now, these cars come with a top speed of 143 miles an hour for the non-AMG version, and a usually a 1.8 litre engine, so not too bad. Very similar to the MG in that it's just quite condensed and small, and it has a very similar sort of size, and with obviously being two-seat, and you can get the roof folded into the back with space as well. Things to note about this car with Parkers is that it was actually a pretty expensive car when it first came out at £28,000 minimum. Now pros are that it's got neat styling, good quality interior, refined with the roof. With that engine there is a few issues and it is pretty packed in but it should still be powerful. Cons of this car? Well there's a few. More powerful models are expensive to run. It's got a poor manual gearbox which is an issue for most of the people who follow me because they want to be drivers and there's no diesel option but that's not a problem because we are going into the electric age. And I think these cars will continue to be pretty, pretty good considerations for a cheap convertible. The only problem with my, the SLK is that it is just too expensive to run out of the ones that we've just seen. So there you have it. They are my five cheap convertibles that you can pick up on a budget going into next year and the winter. That's come to an end with this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Here are my five convertibles. Again, if you have, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what convertible you like most. Let me know if you are subscribing, and if you have, put subscribe down in the comments section below so I can uh, name you out and do some shout outs, as well as continue to make great content for you. So I'll see you then.